All right, it's time for an update and forecast on the wildfires burning in California. Overall, it's been a pretty quiet start to the year until this week. We've had some thunderstorm activity, which has created a large number of lightning fires, mostly in the northwestern portions of the state. So throughout the course of this video, we're going to take a closer look at a few of them. We have the Deep Fire, which is around 1,000 acres. We have the SRF Smith River Complex, which is around 620 acres. And the first one we'll look at is the Head Fire, which you can see is up to 3,580 acres, 0% containment. You can see some of the heat coming off of the fire. And just looking from that view, it does look like more of the heat has been on the southern edge of this fire throughout the day today. You can see where the old perimeter is underneath that. And that is some concern because we do have some structures to the southern portions of this fire. So because of that, there's a large number of evacuation orders and warnings in place. And if you go to watch duty, you can click on this link right here to have a more interactive map yourself. But we can also just see what's going on in this fire. So this is, again, the head fire that we're looking at first. That yellow is the old fire perimeter. The red is where some of the more recent hot spots have been. And then if we turn on structures here, so those little orange dots are your structures. You can see there's some structures to the northwestern side of this fire. And then what I would say is my main concern right now is the structures on the southern edge of this fire. Now one other thing we can do is check out fire history. See if there's anything recent around the head fire. And that is where we do have some good news. There has been some fires around this area recently. You got the 2016 Gap Fire. Let's see, you've got the 2022 McKinney Fire. I remember covering that one. And then you have some older fires to the southeast. So since 2007, Tom Martin, 2012 build, there's most likely been some fuels building back in that area. Now, where we look at where the structures are, that's where we don't have as much fire history. So there's still going to be some fuels on the ground and then the fire will be able to go there unless they stop it with their firefighting resources. Now, one other thing that we can do is look at, so let's turn off fire history just so it's not too complicated on this map, is look at where some of the heat detections are coming up right now. Now, keep in mind this overestimates the fire. This is heat being picked up from satellites in space. So it's always a bit off, but it does show that there's still some activity going on on that fire as well as a lot of our fires in the more northwestern portions of California. So, head fire certainly still active. I'm going to just look at some of the other fires here, and then we're going to go into the kind of weather update and forecast, because that really explains why these fires are happening, and it also explains what's going to happen to these fires in the future. The other one is the deep fire. That one's around 1,000 acres, 0% containment does look like we have a few evacuation orders and warnings and the footage coming out of the deep fire over the last three hours is worth looking at. So you can see some of the clouds increase in the afternoon. You'll see a few popping up here later, but really the fire activity kind of tells the whole story right there. Very dry conditions up there. We'll look at a drought map later in this video, but certainly have some very active fire behavior going on right now. Now, another one is the SRF Smith River Complex. That one's at 620 acres, 0% containment. And the footage out of there in the last few hours, we'll go back a little bit so you can see where we start. It's earlier in the day. And then your, as your temperatures increase, your relative humidity drops, your fire activity increases. So it certainly looks like it's been active on this fire as well. So definitely going to be keeping a close eye on that. We can also just take the above view of California because this tells you a lot of what's going on. You see the smoke mostly in the northwestern portions of the state and a lot more smoking, smoke popping up over the last couple of hours. And part of the reason for that do so you see all these clouds coming in? That's some of our thunderstorm activity. And where you have thunderstorms, you have gustier winds. And the winds were the one thing that was working in our favor in the forecast. We had very warm temperatures. We have some low relative humidities, but overall winds across California were relatively low. 
until these thunderstorms came through. And then where you have thunderstorms, that's where you can get some gustier winds closer to the surface. Now, the reason that we have some thunderstorms is because there's been a couple tropical storms off of Mexico recently. And then you also just, and that creates some moisture in the atmosphere. And then you can see how the moisture moves into places like Arizona, Nevada, and then into the Sierra as well. And you can actually see in the afternoon hours, once that moisture hits the mountains and it's pretty hot out there, you get some of that thunderstorm activity starting to pop up. So when it comes to warnings in California, there's actually a lot going on right now. We have a heat advisory throughout the entire Central Valley. Let's, I can zoom in here. Heat advisory throughout the entire Central Valley. You have excessive heat warnings in the northwestern portions of the state. And then that pink color represents the red flag warnings. So let's just click in here. There's one piece of good news. Our temperatures are going to be moving in a good direction. You can see how they drop down tomorrow and then continue to drop as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. So we're well above average in our temperatures right now and it's still going to be warm moving forward. It just looks like it's not going to be as warm. Now we also have some lightning risk continuing over the next hour or two, but then we're going to see the lightning threat diminish overnight and then it does look like it's going to pop back up again tomorrow and that's why we have the red flag warning not only until 11 p.m. today, but if you click in and look at the fine details, it looks like red flag warning in effect from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. for Thursday for abundant lightning on dry fuels for fire weather zones, and the list goes on. So with thunderstorms, you get lightning, and then with lightning and dry fuels, you can get some fires popping up. So just looking at the weather that we had throughout the day today. Very warm temperatures, that's why we had the heat advisory and the excessive heat warning. Some places over 110 degrees. And then the reason that's bad is because when you have very warm air, it can hold a lot more moisture. And then because it can hold more moisture, your relative humidity drops, so the air is drier, your fuels get drier, makes it easier for fires to spread. So that's why some of our cities and regions today had relative humidity in the teens and whenever you see that you have the potential for an active fire day and then on top of that we had the thunderstorm activity so you can see where there's some lightning earlier today and then if we want to just look at what's expected to happen overnight tonight you notice a lot of those thunderstorms decrease and then as we get into tomorrow afternoon they're going to start to pop back up again. So again, where that happens, you can get lightning, and then you can also get locally gusty winds. So definitely going to be keeping a close eye on the forecast tomorrow. Now, one thing that is still working in our favor throughout most of California is that we did pick up a lot of rainfall this last winter, even into May, we had some rain, and that put a huge dent in the California drought. On the left is what the California drought looked like a year ago, year to so a year ago almost today about what is this 98 percent of the state was in severe drought now zero percent of the state is in severe drought but you can see that where we're seeing some of these fires pop up in the very northwestern portions of california is where we didn't pick up as much rain and there are still some areas that are abnormally dry so it's that along with the lightning which is why when we were looking at the map we were seeing a lot of fire activity exactly where it's been dry and exactly where we've had lightning. Now, with that being said, we've kind of seen things switch around recently in terms of weather's favorability for low fire danger. We were below average in our temperatures for much of the first half of the year, but now we've switched around again, as you're probably feeling out there today with some of the triple digits we have. And it does look like in the long range forecast, most of California is going to be seeing more above average temperatures. So that's going to lead to more drying of our fuels and unfortunately more wildfire. But the main thing that I'm concerned about right now is what's going on with El Nino and some of our hurricane activity. So just a quick refresher on El Nino. You get warm surface water kind of sloshing back to the Eastern Pacific. And then with that, you're going to get more rising motion, which leads to more storm development, more hurricane potential. But it's mostly 
and less vertical wind shear, which leads to more hurricanes in the eastern Pacific, so around Mexico. And then on top of that, it's just warmer water. So warm water is the fuel for hurricanes. So if there's more warm water, you're typically going to have more hurricanes. Now, what that means for wildfire danger in California is we have more potential for lightning fires, which is what we're seeing today and what we'll most likely be seeing more of tomorrow. Because your hurricane happens, it creates a lot of moisture that funnels into California. You get your thunderstorms, you get your lightning. Now, the one that I'm concerned about as of right now is Tropical Storm Hillary. Right now, it's pretty far away just 40 mile per hour winds. It's not really a strong storm as of yet, but we are going to see it curve up Baja, California. At least that's what it's saying right now. And then what that could do is bring a lot more moisture into California. So that's one of the things I'll be watching very closely as we move forward, but we're just going to have to stay tuned there because I think it's still a bit too far off in the forecast to say anything definitively. So I'll continue to do updates and forecasts on these wildfires as we move forward, just to keep you guys posted on everything happening. Hopefully you learned something throughout the course of this video, and thanks for watching.